Hello and welcome to a primer on bronchopulmonary dysplasia with Lindsay Drosty. Part of these slides are adapted from Versant Holdings presentation entitled Bronchopulmonary Dysplasia. So we're going to start with defining bronchopulmonary dysplasia. BPD is chronic lung disease in preterm and term infants who were treated with oxygen and positive pressure ventilation for a primary lung disorder. Normal lung tissue. Surfactant normally allows the alveoli to remain open by reducing surface tension. This keeps the alveoli from sticking together and causing atelectasis and pneumonia. Surfactant provides alveolar stability, decreases opening pressure, and increases lung compliance by reducing the surface tension. Surfactant promotes greater alveolar surface area, leading to improved access to capillary beds for exchange of gases. It improves alve alveolar fluid clearance. The movement of fluids is encouraged by the movement of the cilia. In premature lung tissue, the lung tissue lacks surfactant, which causes the alveoli to stick together and collapse. Although surfactant production begins in the second trimester, quantities are not sufficient until the last month of gestation, about 36 weeks. The result of the sticky surface inside the lungs can be devastating. However, since the development of artificial surfactant, the outcome for extremely premature infants has greatly improved. The result is a decrease in the adherence of the lung tissue and decreased rigidity of the lungs. But this does not correct the underlying immaturity of the lungs, which lack the number and size of cilia to facilitate the exchange of gases and fluids. Because of the weakness of the chest wall and the poor vascularization of the lung tissue, additional interthoracic pressure may be required in the form of high flow nasal cannula, nasal, or CPAP, nasal CPAP or mandatory mechanical ventilation. Surfactant deficiency is the primary factor in the development of RDS in the very premature infant. When a premature baby is born, increased oxygen concentrations may be administered to help them transition from fetal to extrauterine circulation. From there, they may be placed on a mechanical ventilator and hopefully they're uh, administered artificial surfactant. The decision to continue administration of supplemental oxygen is made based on the infant's blood gas results in their clinical presentation. The least possible trauma to the infant and the lungs is the preferred choice. That's where you will see and hear about first intention, which is getting um, an extremely premature or premature infant on the oscillator ventilator or the jet ventilator first. Immature lungs have inadequate, inadequate numbers of mature cilia to function adequately. The inclusion of supplemental oxygen causes more damage to the tissue, resulting in a decreased number of available cilia needed for the exchange of gases and fluids. Disruption of capillary beds further decreases the efficiency of this exchange. Barotrauma stretches and smooths lung tissue, decreasing the lung compliance. Barotrauma ruptures alveoli, leading to blebs, pulmonary interstitial emphysema, also known as PIE, and pneumothorax. Barotrauma damages capillaries, causing albumin to leak into the alveoli, which decreases the exchange of gas and fluid and further reduces lung compliance. These changes are visible on x-ray, and the results begin a vicious cycle of increasing oxygen and pressure requirements. Changing x-rays show the progression from the ground glass appearance to the dilated alveoli and blebs of PIE, then into atelectasis, and lastly, patchy fluid-filled alveoli of BPD. Early administration of artificial surfactant decreases the need for prolonged mechanical ventilation. Allowing the premature infant to man maintain a lower saturation decreases the need for high oxygen concentrations, which in turn decreases the presence of free oxygen radicals and alleviates the chemical damage to the lung tissue.
This is why setting pulse ox targets on the patient monitor is so important. The use of oscillating ventilators and placing infants on nasal kenya as quickly as possible help to reduce barotrauma as well. However, all of these in interventions are dependent on the infant's tolerance. Studies have shown that fluid weight gain in the early postnatal period of an extremely low birth weight infant causes increased lung fluid and therefore increases vascular resistance. However, in this same period, poor nutrition is de detrimental to the developing lung and this causes somewhat of a dilemma for practitioners involved in their care. Another problem is maintaining systemic blood pressure while controlling pulmonary vascular resistance. Managing the infant with BPD. Respiratory requirements include oxygen administration, maintaining an optimum saturation based upon the gestational age, and obtaining capillary blood gases to follow CO2, bicarb, and base excess. Pulmonary hygiene includes CPT and suctioning, and some possible respiratory treatments include inhaled meds and nebulizer treatments such as albuterol, atrovent, and pulmicort. Now we'll get into some facility-specific information. Um, you may have seen some of our patients recently um, or heard about them going on BPD ventilator settings. This can happen as early as one month of age and include a higher PEEP, that's where you may see an infant um, on PEEPs in the teens and up to a PEEP of 20. Longer inspiratory times, lower respiratory rates, and larger tidal volumes. NAVA. NAVA is neuro neurally adjusted ventilator assist. The use of NAVA can still be considered in an infant with BPD as long as they have a reliable respiratory drive. So some uh, suggested activity requirements when managing the infant with BPD are minimal stress and stimulation, have a planned schedule for them, including sleep times, minimal crying time, and activity or stimulation that is appropriate to the gestational age, which is where our physical therapists and occupational therapists can help. Some cardiac considerations. The stiffness of the lung of BPD, along with the limited amount of functional capillaries, causes an enlarged heart, which further compromises the work of the lungs. Increased work for the heart causes right-sided heart failure and possible total heart failure. Alleviating the work of the heart is key to preventing heart failure. Strict management of the infant's fluid balance is paramount in controlling the workload of the heart. Here are some information on the fluid requirements. So you, you want to give them the minimum requirement and still allow them to grow. You, you want to make sure that you have accurate weights and keep really good INOs on this patient. You don't want to allow them a, a lot of free fluids. You want to control insensible water loss. In some ways that um, a BPD patient might experience insensible water loss are through sweating or crying and potentially give diuretics for fluid overload and lung disease. So liquid protein, sometimes we add liquid protein to a BPD patient's feedings, and the decision to do this comes when the patient is gaining a lot of weight very quickly. And these are our patients that you might say, oh, they look so fat. Well, that can be a good and a bad thing. You want them to grow, but you want them to grow linearly, which means they need to grow in both weight and height. So those patients that are growing in weight, but not growing with the curve for height, may need liquid protein. So now we're into the pharmaceutical considerations. Because of the cardiac complications, infants with BPD are often treated with diuretics to limit the work of the heart. The pressure of an enlarged heart and the heavy work of breathing often 
<clears throat> can cause reflux, which can be controlled, which should be controlled to avoid aspiration and further damage to the lungs. Respiratory stimulants such as caffeine are used to maintain efficient respirations and ster steroids would be used to help heal the tissue. Okay, so bethanicol. Bethanicol is relatively new and of note here I want to say that there are no pharma pharmacologic treatment options currently approved by the FDA for treatment of tracheomalacia. Bethenicol is a muscarinic agent. The action is to improve the tone of the tracheolic muscle, trachealis muscle and airway mechanics. The child needs to have documented tracheomalacia as seen on, on a dynamic CT or an MLB. And if you have a patient on bethanicol, use of this medication has likely been discussed with multiple different providers in the pulmonary team before they decided to start the medication. Uh, a common question that the team has when dealing with a patient with PPD from a nurse or a family is why is this patient still on caffeine when they are four months of age or older? And caffeine helps reduce apnea when the patient is premature and decreases the incidence that the preemie will develop BPD. But as the patient ages, caffeine continues to help with pulmonary vascular remodeling. So Denovil, it selectively reduces pulmonary vascular resistance. Usually the patient must be at least 34 to 36 weeks adjusted age. It can be used in infants with BPD and pulmonary hypertension as seen, as seen on an echo. If they do start on sildenafil, it's likely that the infant will need to be discharged on the med and its usage and potential weaning will be managed as an outpatient. Arginine. Arginine is a supplement used to help correct metabolic alkalosis. If a patient has metabolic alkalosis, they are harder to wean from a ventilator. Metabolic alkalosis occurs when chronic diuretic therapy is used. The diuretics then cause hypochloremia, and arginine helps to correct that. Okay, so some other causes of BPD less common are meconium aspiration syndrome, pneumonia, feeding aspiration, severe hypoxic events, and respiratory pulmonary insults. Fortunately, lung tissue is very forgiving and renews itself continuously. If we can buy enough time for the patient, the lungs will usually mend themselves. Okay, so lastly, we've come to talk about morbidities associated with BPD. And since the usual victims of BPD are also the most frail premature infants, several of the most dismal sequelae of prematurity are also associated with BPD. Many infants with BPD also have CP, severe retinopathy of prematurity, and periventricular leukomalacia. Because most very ill and extremely low birth weight infants are subjected to multiple courses of antibiotics during their stay in the NICU, many are hearing impaired. Necrotizing intercolitis is often caused by severe hypoxia in the neonate, so infants with BPD may also have short gut syndrome or feeding intolerance. In closing, with the recent use of surfactant replacement, survival rates have improved. Surviving infants now are having less severe cases of BPD. Those that do have a severe case of BPD continue to have a high risk of pulmonary issues and mortality during their first two years of life.